Agriculture and environment are really a, a very delicate, intricate balance. You know, there are a lot of different variables that influence the health of any system. The agricultural practices that we conduct here have a direct impact on the health of the watershed. And so finding a way to balance the inputs of all the different aspects of these very, very complex systems is an exceptional challenge. I think what's interesting in Pennsylvania is that there's really three main um, things we do with the landscape. One of those is natural land cover, so say forest, water resources, streams and wetlands. Um, we use land for agricultural activities, we use land for urban development. Those are our three main types of land use in Pennsylvania. Changes in land use throughout much of the region have resulted in a lot of houses, roads, impervious surfaces of various sorts that change the entire runoff pattern. Pesticides are applied in suburbia as well as agricultural systems. Uh, pet wastes are a source of nitrogen just as dairy cow and, and hog wastes are a source of nitrogen. And a lot of the discussion has centered around nitrogen. It comes from fertilizer on farm fields, it comes from manure, it comes from wastewater treatment plants, uh, it comes from people fertilizing their lawns. And we use a lot of nitrogen and we have very leaky systems, so we send a lot downstream. The Susquehanna River Basin alone within that large watershed is 27,500 square miles. So there are a lot of farmers, there are a lot of sewage treatment plants that are going to need to take actions, which all require money. It will take time. Our real problem is that we just have a, an imbalance of nutrients. Uh, we end up accumulating nutrients in areas where animals are. And what we've got to do is figure out how to get the whole system back into a little better balance. The air-water interface around um, animal ag is it's always really integrated. And um, we've got to kind of keep track that uh, what we're doing to improve the air doesn't uh, end up going to the water, and what we're doing to improve the water doesn't end up going to the air. When wetlands are in a position, say for example, between agriculture and a stream, they do quite a bit. That's of value. They play a real role in, for example, um, absorbing nutrients or transforming nutrients. They have a, a large role in nitrogen cycling, um, in carbon storage. Uh, they retain sediment. Many streams throughout Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Virginia are technically considered impaired. That means that their water quality is not of sufficient value to support all their uses. Pennsylvania has restored about 2,200 miles of forest buffers along streams. Uh, we've initiated, with a lot of other partners, a precision feeding program for dairy cows, which has a tremendous impact on nutrient levels on local farms. A lot of our extension programs are designed to try to give farmers the information they need to, to improve the practices on the farm. We've been doing a lot of research and extension work in how do we integrate uh, nutrient management and no-till crop production. Uh, they're both uh, practices that have been shown to be beneficial, uh, but yet there are some issues there where they conflict with each other. I love to plow, and I knew it was wrong, but I still love to plow. Then I finally went to the proper training that it, it turned me around. And now that I can see that, I've been going no-till corn. Soil loss on no-till corn is one ton per, per year, which is nothing. And we're saving soil that way. Many of the farmers that we talk to about conservation practices are more eager to implement those practices when they find out that they can save money on their own farms. Conservation practices do pay because it keeps the soil on the ground, it keeps the water clean, and in many cases, it'll help them save money, especially on energy. The Agriculture and Environment Center was established to help bridge some gaps that I think the college has recognized uh, existed for quite some time. We've got all this amazing research that's taking place around environmental impacts that are associated with um, human disturbances. 
And certainly agriculture, like any other human activity, has um, environmental consequences. There are issues with water quality that we need to keep front and center as we consider uh, the critical balance of maintaining the natural resources here in Pennsylvania. The research from Penn State is influencing the decisions and policies that uh, really have an impact at all levels. The solutions that we might derive for the portfolio of agricultural operations in Pennsylvania could actually be quite variable. It may not be one size fits all, but at the root of the problem, the science is the same. A nutrient moves through soil with certain properties. And if our scientists can help to continue to understand that process, we can adapt that science to technologies that I think will have great benefit to the diverse array of producers that we have here in Pennsylvania.